steps. Exceptional care, better health. Hi, I'm Dan Summers, the director of STEPS, the David and Joanne Scholl Simulation Training and Education for Patient Safety Center. You're going to be doing a tour through our 20,000 square foot education center in which we have all the schools of health sciences, graduate medical and graduate nursing programs, as well as faculty and staff from the hospital. We are fully accredited through the Society for Simulation and Healthcare and we provide all the modalities of simulation as well as educational support to all those that come here. We hope you enjoy your tour today. Welcome to STEPS. Hi, I'm Adam Hoffman, Simulation Education Specialist at West Virginia STEPS. The STEPS Center has two Clinical Skills Practice Labs, or CSPLs, A and B. CSPL B is equipped with 10 stretchers, 10 ultrasound machines, as well as TVs above each bed space and computers next to each bed. In this room, we can practice IV insertion, central line insertion, as well as CPR classes for up to 60. My name is Christy Barnhart. I'm the Director of Nursing Simulation, and I'm going to talk to you about our CSPLA, which is our Clinical Skills Practice Lab that we use for our nursing students. This is where uh, the students get to learn how to do nursing skills, they get to practice nursing skills, and then they test on nursing skills that they learn here before they get to the patient. Um, this is a place where they can learn in a safe environment and uh, make mistakes, learn from the mistakes, and um, correct them before they get to the patient. I'm Ryan Wamsley, I'm the standardized patient educator at STEPS. Uh, my job is to make sure that standardized patients are standardized so that they're all following the same case and helping our students learn in an environment where they're practicing dealing with patients so that when they get out into the real world and they're dealing with patients they are prepared for all the different encounters that they may have. Um, we typically do most of our standardized patient encounters in our exam rooms. We have 12 of them and they're set up to mirror the clinic environment that you would see at like an urgent care through WVU. Uh, there's all the things that you would see in one of those exam rooms, like stethoscopes and blood pressure cuffs. Uh, and any time that somebody comes into one of those rooms, they're going to kind of feel as if they are in an urgent care or an exam room for a clinic experience. Um, so whenever we have any type of uh, examination, so it could be formative, uh, we have a lot of formative experiences, but sometimes we have summative exams where students come in to be evaluated on their clinical skills and clinical reasoning. We standardize our patients so that no matter which room a student goes into, they are able to kind of have the same experience as any other student that would come through that examination. We train the patients on different case materials, so they memorize a script. Um, typically, whatever the student asks them, they're prepared in a standardized way so that students can kind of follow the path in their clinical reasoning, and we can evaluate um, different things that the student might do, so how they talk to a patient, their empathy, or how they get to a diagnosis. We that get involved with simulations, especially with standardized patients, have a few different options as to how they might observe or evaluate students. Um, some of our uh, faculty like to do it live, so we can set them up in the computer lab or in a room nearby, sometimes even from their own office. We, they have a login and a password, they can watch the encounters happen in real time. Sometimes preceptors like to be nearby so that they can give feedback immediately following an encounter so it's fresh in the mind of the students. We have debriefing rooms where they can go in and kind of have that experience either one-on-one -on -one or with a group. Um, but we also have the ability to record in encounters so that if you don't have the time to watch it live or you have office hours at that time or a class, you can go back in and watch it later and even annotate that video to point out areas where the student might need to improve. Our angio room houses our angio mentor, which does procedure over wire procedures like cardiac catheterization and reboa, as well as houses one of our ultrasound mannequins. The physical assessment lab, or PAL, is available to the students after hours with car swipe access and houses eye mannequins, ear mannequins, heart and lung sound trainers, ultrasound machines and exam table, as well as our Biomedics ultrasound trainer and our Anatomage virtual cadaver. Hi, my name is Josh Bell. I am a simulation operations specialist here at WVU Steps. 
um, coming to you live from our control room. We have four control rooms here operating our four simulation rooms. Um, next to me you'll see all of our uh, computers where we operate our simulators from. Uh, we normally operate three per room, one being a control computer, one monitoring our learning space uh, recording software, and then one for our uh, scenarios. Uh, the sim rooms themselves uh, contain our simulators, uh, equipment you're going to see in a normal patient room, crash cart, telemetry monitor, uh, medical supplies, that sort of thing. Um, we have two-way glass here in between the two rooms so we can sit here uh, in privacy and run the simulations while our learners are getting a full experience within the rooms uh, without any pressure of onlookers. Um, all of these rooms are equipped with um, sound both in the simulation room as well as in the control room so we can monitor what's going on and give the learners in the scenario the best information possible. So we have mannequins from three different manufacturers, uh, CAE, Laridol, as well as Gamard. All of them produce a high fidelity simulation. Basically what that means is our simulators can act and react as if it was a real patient. Uh, they come equipped with heart sounds, lung sounds, breath sounds, pulses, um, pretty much head to toe, uh, functioning uh, pupils, meaning they can react to light, uh, they can be constricted, they can be dilated, as well as we could speak through them. So the learner can actually have a true interactive experience with a patient, um, as well as we can mulage these as well to where they could have injuries if this is a trauma case or maybe some sort of medical scenario where they have to have, you know, a rash or something like that on their skin. Um, we have age groups from adult all the way down to preemie so that we can run a scenario pretty much for any age group for any type of patient um, for the health sciences. I'm Rusty Durr. I'm the lead simulation specialist here at STEPS. The surgical education unit is designed to allow practice of skills from laparoscopic surgery as well as endoscopic procedures. We have multiple laparoscopic surgery box trainers. We have a Da Vinci XI simulator and we also have an endoscopic trainer that allows upper and lower GI as well as bronchoscopy training for our learners. Uh, this is our new operating room. It is designed to provide our learners the opportunity to practice as they would in a real OR. Uh, we have a real operating room table, which allows students to practice even patient positioning. We also have a dual console DaVinci XI robot uh, that is dedicated to training, and as well as anesthesia gas machines that our nurse anesthetist and anesthesia residents can use for training purposes. I'm Joe Lynch. I'm one of the pediatric hospitalists and also one of the simulationists that works with STEPS. Yeah, so the debriefing rooms are, serve as kind of the hub for our simulation and we think about how to talk about what we've experienced in the moment. And so we have all of our learners, a lot of our simulation specialists enjoy being in the debriefing room with us. Um, so we'll use whiteboards, which you can see behind me or any of the computers to have visual aids, and we'll just discuss the finer points of the case, um, both through learning points or how um, learners emotionally did through the case or how they interacted with standardized patients or mannequins or anything like that. It's the perspectives that I get not only from learners, but from the staff at STEPS as well. Uh, I've had the opportunity to hear from people who have gone through real life scenarios when they've had sick children, sick loved ones, uh, they've been through um, a patient encounter the same way and it's really nice to get multiple perspectives to, to reinforce either what you're doing or to challenge your practice and so I think it's really a learning opportunity for every person that steps foot in here. Hello, I'm Dorian Williams, I'm the Assistant Dean for Simulation at WVU School of Medicine and the Medical Director of STEPS. Hope you enjoyed the tour of the facility. As you can see, the facility is absolutely fantastic, offering educational opportunities to learners of all levels of all, and of all disciplines. STEPS is an accredited center in teaching, assessment, research, and systems integration. So when learners come here, they know they're learning in a facility that meets high standards. And when faculty come to teach, they're teaching in a place that is very special. 
What you haven't seen uh, is the quality of our staff. The staff are what makes STEPS the special place that it is. We have uh, 10 certified healthcare simulation educators who are available to help teach, help set up simulations, help with research and scholarship, and they are what make STEPS such a special place. I am absolutely delighted to get to work in STEPS every day and work with the people that I do. I can see the change in our learners as they advance through their training programs. And we are very fortunate at West Virginia University to have such a fabulous facility. STEPS, exceptional care, better health.